So today we are in Budapest. Oh yeah. downside of using the Osmo and using a rolly bag and that is the fact that I cannot push my glasses back up to my face while rolling my suitcase while simultaneously taking videos with the Osmo so now my glasses are just halfway down my nose guess who has finally joined us and decided to join the crew hi guys hi you guys are late <laughs> First tip about Budapest, we stayed in a place called the Hive Hostel. So it does say on their website that they are a party hostel. They did inform us. However, you don't understand how many British stag parties come to Eastern Europe, particularly Budapest. So basically it was our room and then all of the other rooms were these British stag parties who would come home at like 4 a.m. and be like, hi and wake everyone up if you are a party animal and you do want to go out and have lots of fun and come home at 5 a.m would 100 percent recommend this hostel it's amazing they even have like a little bar area downstairs so you literally have a bar in your hostel which is amazing however if you do want to get an early night's sleep um i would not recommend staying there because you will be woken up at 4 a.m by all the british stag parties just a tip for traveling in hostels in general, something that we did throughout the whole trip was getting a private room for all six or seven of us and stay in that private room and have an ensuite bathroom. So that meant that we were only sharing a bathroom with the five or six of us instead of sharing it with the other 20 people living on that floor. Would highly recommend that. Much more hygienic. It's raining super hardcore here. And we're gonna go and try and find food while protecting all of my camera equipment while trying to take videos in the rain. So that's gonna in be pretty the cool. Rain. There's a bait cafe over there that has the best pastries ever. Yeah, you want real people food. Are we going to real, people, real food. people food? I would like real people food. <laughs> we're off to find real people food for adults. Yeah. We went to a restaurant called Daniel's. It was literally like five minutes away from our hostel. Really, really amazing food. Um, what was really even cooler about the place was that we actually bumped into another vlogger. Well, not vlogger, but vlogger called Trixie. Hi guys, so this is our new friend Trixie. She's Hi. awesome and also a vlogger, so we're really excited to have her. And we had the most amazing conversation with her the whole, like, throughout our meal and we got to know her and she told us a few of her like favorite places to go and be around in Budapest which was really cool. If you do go, I would recommend ordering the, um, I think it was the avocado chia seed sandwich. It was delicious, like vegetarian, great, yummy, highly recommend that. They also have soups of the day as well if you like soup. I just cry about my birthday. But we love you for it. It's good I'm not wearing mascara. <laughs> People don't think I'm funny, but I think I'm funny and I, I want to just with my family. Okay. 21 years of life. I have never had such an incredibly diverse and supportive friend group. And I'm really happy with you guys. So that was my speech. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna use... <laughs> the cutest thing just happened. We're sitting waiting for our food and they just gave us free giant cookies. Like, giant ass cookies. That's so nice. I'm feeling very loved, guys. Guys, I want as many pictures of you guys. Oh, yeah. You know, I just put that one. I'm gonna take that away from you guys. I just put a cookie and put it back. I'm a terrible person. Um, but basically, we found this adorable little place called Judapest. And they do contemporary contemporary Jewish design? I would say so. Yeah. And they have these <laughs> notebook things which say, what was this one? This one's the ghetto inside out. The ghetto inside out. Very cool. There's also a um, personal favorite. Jewish and not. And the best one ever. Sex is a mitzvah, guys. It's our new what tagline else do you of do the trip? on Shabbat dinner other than sex. Oh, so. on Shabbat. <laughs> 
interesting Did you know point that- to make. It's a Jewish art store, but they don't have a mezuzah on the door. Ooh, true. They sell them, but they don't have one on the door. Stay. And she was saying, I asked her about the Jewish community in Hungary, and she said it's not growing. There's a huge Jewish community on the border with Austria, but a majority of the Jews that live in Budapest are here, in this relatively close area, and they're all Orthodox. Tell me what is our pronunciation of this? Beautiful. Dahani. Dahani. Is there a G in it? Dahan. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. It's a lot simpler. You we. The N and Y is like one sound. Dahan. Yes. Dahan. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> also visited the Dohan Street Synagogue, um, so that was really important for me because going around um, the whole of Europe and kind of connecting with my Jewish heritage um, was something that I put a lot of importance on this trip, um, so I made sure that we went and we experienced as much Jewish culture as we could in each city. So the Dohan Street Synagogue was kind of the pinnacle or the, the main point of Jewish life in Budapest. Um, it was the cultural center for Jews in the area. It still is today. They still host services there. So we actually had a brilliant tour guide. So if you do go and visit the synagogue, I would 100% recommend doing a tour because otherwise it's kind of just going to visit another shul. You don't really hear the history and the meaning behind the place. So definitely do a tour if you're there. Um, it was also really interesting that it's one of the only shuls, I think maybe the only shul in the world, where there is a cemetery inside the shul. So normally in Jewish culture, you can't put a cemetery close to a shul. Um, however, during um, the ghettos during World War II, they were forced to create a Jewish cemetery here because they just didn't have anywhere to put all of the, um, all of the victims. So they ended up being buried inside the shul's grounds. So it's quite an interesting to see how life was forced to, forced to adapt and um, the consequences of what happened in World War II in all of these different places. And the building is absolutely gorgeous. It looks like we've stepped into, I don't know, like a 1907 yeah. period <laughs> drama <laughs> mystery thriller. I don't know, it's probably the wrong time. Or like the 1820s. We're in the 1820s. This is, this is where we are. But my nose is super, super red because it's freezing cold outside and I'm regretting not putting bass on it this morning because I look like Tori the red nose right here. However, we are at Parliament. We've got our tickets. Which is really exciting. If you look up close, it says it's TripAdvisor advised. So if a bunch of random people have voted that this is a good idea, clearly we should be here, obviously. We will report back later to confirm if it's a TripAdvisor choice. If you have the time, I would definitely recommend going and visiting um, the parliament buildings in Budapest. I think they're one of the largest parliament buildings in the world. So you can just imagine like how big this place is. It's absolutely beautiful from the outside, so if you do just want to go and stand and take some great photos, you are going to get some incredible shots outside there because the architecture is just like to die for. However, if you do go inside, you get a chance to see the famous Budapest monarch's crown, which they have on lockdown inside the parliament, so you can only really see that if you go inside. You're not meant to take pictures in this room. However, I did try, and as you can see over here, it didn't work out so well. There's my chin in the background. <laughs> but um, it was a really cool experience doing the tour. Lots of walking, lots of stairs. So be prepared, bring water, because you're going to need it. But me and Tanya are really stoked because they pulled out the red carpet for us. They understood that the dictator was coming, and they have prepared accordingly. Basically on the walls of all of the buildings they have these crazy little uh, cigar holders So while you're being super fancy in Parliament, you could just drop off your cigar and come back and fetch it later And it's even labeled so you can know which one is yours <laughs> This is a building. This is a building for ants? <laughs> they just removed their flag from their Parliament building 
either they're seceding control to myself as the dictator, or someone I'm not sure. <laughs> So Baby, incapable. Oh <laughs> Why? Because look at you. Like fucking drag queens up in here. What? <laughs> yeah, they're really good. That's what I mean. Like, I know, oh, good. I know that's what she means. Yeah. She's not saying you guys look like men that are trying to be women. <laughs> oh, wait, that's actually not what You're I mean. You're very bad at calling them. Honestly, to be fair though, at times in my life I used to wish, like, oh my god, I wish I looked like a drag queen. Really? Oh, I wish I looked like RuPaul all the time. Again, and I keep saying this, I flew all the way from Israel to Europe only to go and keep eating Israeli food. So in that fashion, of course, we went to a restaurant called Mazel Tov for dinner. Because of course, like you can't travel to Europe and not eat at something called Mazel Tov, but whatever. And the food was actually really good. So what everyone did is ordered like a whole bunch of like different plates, like different, almost like tapas style plates. And everyone just shared, it was amazing. Um, for my main dish, I also had the salmon, which was really delicious. So would definitely recommend going there. The whole inside is kind of like this rustic uh, garden style. So it looks amazing on the inside. Do make a reservation. So the only reason that we got in is because we made a reservation like a month and a half in advance. If you don't make a reservation, you will be standing in a queue that literally like snakes out the door of the building. So of course our meal would not be complete without us going to one of the most amazing sweet shops I've ever been to. So it's called The Sweet, it's right next to a restaurant called Vintage Garden, you'll hear more about that later. Um, and inside they have the most amazing like cake pops and cakes and tarts and biscuits and just like everything your heart could imagine. But also if you are a blogger or Instagrammer or influencer, they do have like on the wall this giant sign that is basically just roses like stuck to the wall and it's absolutely beautiful happy birthday to you happy birthday dear Leah happy birthday to you happy birthday dear Leah happy birthday to you happy birthday to you so after dinner, we did something called um, Pub Crawl Budapest. So basically it's an organized pub crawl where they take you to all of um, the like bars in the area. You normally, well, we got like a free welcome shot or drink at each bar. It can be a really cool way to see the city and a really great way to meet friends because it just gives you like a cute introduction to the nightlife. They make you do like funny activities and things like that. So for example, they made me do a piggyback ride as well as be the top of a pyramid. Please note that I was in a dress this evening and none of my other friends would volunteer to do it. So yeah, I did a piggyback ride at a pyramid in a dress. Don't do it on your first night. So we did our pub crawl the night that we landed. We had been up for about 21 hours at this point. So we were exhausted and left a little bit early because we were just so tired. So I think maybe plan it for a night after you've had a lot of sleep so that you can be awake and like enjoy it to its fullest. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I can't wait to see you all again next week for Budapest Part 2.